Yep, it's working. Let's find out how. Hey everyone, what's happening? John here and welcome back to the channel. This is the second video in the series detailing my journey into making a tennis ball machine. All right, we know everyone hates software, but as you may already know, it's all around us. And anything with a battery and a screen, like your phone, has code in it. And even this video is only possible because of software. So stick with me through this and you might just appreciate it a bit more by the end of the video. Speaking of video, if you haven't watched the previous one yet, here's the link. Go check it out and come back to this video. It covers why I'm trying to make this beast of a machine. Also, just to make it clear up front, while I will try and explain the high level logic, I won't be able to go into the code, mainly because for this type of content, I don't think there's a lot of value in doing that. Plus, I think it's proprietary. So, it wouldn't be fair for me to show it all. Not that it's gonna make me a millionaire or anything like that. But, if you are interested in the code, reach out to me in the comments section and let's see how we can go about it. All right, enough of that. For our machine to do its thing, we need some logic. So, imagine a tennis ball machine that magically exists. How would one want to interact with it? Well, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. Looking at all the existing tennis ball machines, they have one thing in common, and that is called modes. So here's what I've come up with. First, sweep mode, which automatically launches the balls horizontally. Next is depth mode, which automatically launches the balls vertically. Then we have my favorite, random mode. This mode combines the above two to launch the balls anywhere on the court. And finally, we have the manual mode, where we have full control over speed, spin, frequency and angles for targeted training. Okay, we have worked out the modes, now what? Well, as a player, you pick a mode and the machine goes to work. Simple, but we don't want it to start launching the balls immediately, mainly because we have to walk across the court to get into position. So, in addition to the modes, we need the logic to cater to a start and stop functionality as well. Perfect, let's review this setup. To get coding on the microcontroller, a computer is required with Arduino IDE. This is necessary to write and test the code. Then, using a USB cable, you send the code to the microcontroller, which then runs the code repeatedly. If you want to know more, here's a YouTube link for the basics of Arduino. With the setup done, we can start coding and testing the machine. Here's a quick look at my code. This section has all the defaults for all the components. And then we have the setup section where we initialize the components. Finally, we have the loop section where the magic happens. What you're seeing here is logic to get the position from the rotary encoders to move the motor shaft to the target position. Don't worry, we'll talk about it more in just a second. All right, moving on. We need to wire up the electronics so the code can actually do its thing. I've done this already and here's how it looks. Here are the components that need to be connected. We have two power levels in the circuit. 12 volt for the motor and the motor drivers and 5 volts for the rest. The 5 volt is actually supplied by the motor driver, which is cool. We then get them all connected to Arduino. Now, I'm only using one button on the radio remote, but I have wired up all four so I can use them in the future if needed. Nice. Well, and this is how it looks in real life. It's a bit messy, but not all that bad, hey? By the way, these motors you see here are just for testing. The real ones draw more current, which I'm avoiding during development. Okay, we've got the code, we've got the wiring done. What's next to you ask? Well, it's demo time. <laughs> We're gonna see the sweep mode in action, and I'll explain as we go along. When the machine starts up for the first time, it gives a welcome message and asks the player to select a mode. The player then selects sweep mode using the onboard IR remote. The machine prompts the player to start. This is where the radio remote comes into play. When the start button is pressed, the machine comes alive and the feeder and the launch motor start running. The ball feeder motor spins a disc that catches and throws the ball down an imaginary chute. Remember this from our previous video? When the ball hits a limit switch, it sends a signal to Arduino, which tells the sweep motor to move to the target position and the ball gets launched in that direction. Speaking of positions, we have five of them. 
There is position 0, which sends the ball down the T of the service box. Then we have position 1, that is 7 degrees to the left. Then we have position 2, which is another 7 degrees to the left. And finally, we have positions minus 1 and minus 2, which are mirroring positions on the right. This is all possible thanks to a sensor known as Rotary Encoder that tracks the motor's movement, sending signals to help us track its direction and distance. Here's a simple graphic that shows how it works. We then use PID control, which is a fancy term for feedback control, to make sure the motor moves smoothly to the right spot. I've written code that constantly checks and adjusts the motor's position until it's reached its target. There's a lot going on here, I know, but the key is to get the general idea. Hope this wasn't too overwhelming, even if you're not into programming. And let me just say, getting the PID control to work was not easy. I spent close to maybe 100 hours or more to get it working like this. I'm sure it's mainly because it's the first time for me, but man, it's no fun. <laughs> there you have it, folks. That's a wrap on Sweet Mode. Let's go over the other modes quickly. Depth Mode is like Sweet Mode's cool cousin that has vertical positions that are spaced 10 degrees apart. Again, the player selects the depth mode using the onboard IR remote and once in position, hits the start button on the radio remote. Depth and sweep modes are pretty similar at the code level, but here's the twist. Initially, it goes up by 30 degrees or to position 3 and then oscillates between positions 3, 4 and 5 using 10 degree increments. The goal here is for positions 3, 4 and 5 to mimic lobs. It's basically like setting up to practice smashes at the net or even at the service line. Moving on to random mode, this is my personal favorite as it has the element of surprise. I created a logic that picks a random horizontal and vertical position, telling the motors where to go. Think of it as a game of chance for the tennis balls. Lastly, the manual mode is exactly what it sounds like. The machine becomes your personal tennis ball concierge. You have full control over the ball speed, the frequency you want the balls to be launched at, and the spin. Here you see the lower wheel running slower than the upper wheel for a top spin effect. And now it's the other way around for a slice effect. You also get to choose the sweep and depth positions. And as you can see here, I've also added a top spin effect to really dial it in. Oh, by the way, once set up, the limit switch doesn't have any effect on the manual mode as there is no change to sweep or the depth positions between ball launches. And finally, if any of these modes are deselected, which shows like this on the display, the sweep and the depth motors will return to their neutral positions. This is my way of resetting the machine at the end of the practice, but you could do this anytime. Whew, I think that went well. And that's the end of this demo. The next video is going to be crucial. I'll be combining the electronics and mechanics. It's going to be a bit trickier, but hey, that's what makes this project exciting, right? I'll be building it in stages, and I'm sure there'll be some hilarious engineering mishaps along the way. I am excited and terrified at the same time to see how this goes. Leave your thoughts and comments below. I'd love to hear them. And like that limit switch, press the like button. It's asking for it. If you survived this video, why not subscribe? I could have bored you to death. I'm pretty sure I've lost a few along the way. Look, I should really stop now. So, thanks for watching and take care of yourself. I'll see you in the next one.